Okay, um, let's pray. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in our midst. For where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are there with them, and therefore you are here with us. We pray that you teach us through your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, as we are going through this lesson, I want us to keep an open mind. Not an open mind for just anything, an open mind for things that has to do with what comes from the Bible. Okay? Um, the Bible passage is taken from the book of Matthew 5, verse 5 to 6. Matthew 5, 5 to 6. It reads, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. The memory verse is taken from the book of Psalm 22, verse 26. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Now, let's read the lesson introduction. It reads, The Beatitudes describe the ideal disciple and his rewards, both present and future. Having discovered that the Beatitudes are a series of eight blessings spoken by Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, we shall do some exposition on verses 5 and 6 in this study. Lesson outline 1. Blessed are the meek. What does it mean to be meek? What does it mean to be meek? Can somebody help us please? Okay, no, nobody wants to help us. Okay, to be meek is when you have money and hold your shoulders up high. Is that the meaning? Uh -huh. Then tell me the meaning now. The opposite. Holding your shoulders down. Okay. To the right level, Sha. Okay. So... Let's just see what the manual says meek is. The manual says, um, the Greek word for meek is prowess. It refers to madness, gentleness of spirit, or humility. It was, also, it was used to describe reigning in a stallion. Okay. If we notice here, is describing meek. It says a humble attitude that expresses itself in the patience, endurance of the of offenses. Does it make, mean that to be meek is to be humble? Huh? Sorry, you said it can be. I, I don't think anybody has given me satisfactory de this definition of meekness. If you say meekness and humility, are they the same? No. So what is meekness? Okay. Okay. The definition of meekness here says it is a deliberate choice to refrain from utilizing your right or full authority for the benefit of someone else. You have the authority to, to do something or revenge, but you decide to hold back. That's the definition of meekness in a nutshell. You're the GM of a company. Your subordinate insults your family or your parents or, your, or, your, or you know, blatantly in front of you. And you can fire that subordinate. But that subordinate is productive in, the, in, in, in your company. And you decide not choose not to fire the person but rather reprimand. So if, when you have the authority to do something and you don't do it for the sake of the other person, that's meekness. Now, does meekness mean letting things go 100% of the time? Is it any time you have the authority to do something and somebody, offend, somebody does something wrong, 
You just have to be meek and you let the person go. Can somebody help me? Is it, is it good to be, it doesn't mean letting things go 100% of the time. I want us to be practical. You say, no. Okay. One thing about life is this, especially if we look at Jesus' character. If we don't read about Jesus properly in the Bible, we think that living like Jesus is walking on eggshells. Look at what Jesus did. The Bible says, Jesus was meek. Yet, this meek person did this. John 2, 13, verse 16. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found, that, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changes of money, money sitting. And when he had made a scourge, Jesus went and made a whip. In Nigeria, we call it koboko. He made it himself, whip. Wait, Jesus, I thought you were meek. What are you using that koboko for? He made that scourge and he drove them out of the temple. And the sheep and the oxen. That means he was flogging them out of the temple. Is that your idea of meekness? Uh, our sister, uh, uh, um, auntie says no. Is that our idea of meekness? Let's, let's be factual. But the Bible says Jesus was meek. So then what is meekness? Not only did he flog them, he, did he use the uh, 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 scourge and drive them out. He poured out the changes and money on over three tables. I want us to imagine Jesus, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, mm, over three tables, whipping people off the temple. Yeah, the Bible says Jesus was meek. So then what is meekness? Everybody is quiet now. Look at, let me prove Jesus was meek. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, Take my yoke upon, upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. Yet, he did all that. Now, one thing we have to know, if we look at the Bible dynamics, the truth always comes first. In this society where feelings are respected, truth should always trump feelings. Jesus Christ placed the truth first. He was meek, the way we describe it. He is meek. But then meekness simply means that you have to honor the truth. Otherwise, it will be false meekness. Same thing with everything in the Bible. The truth always comes first. Hey, don't tell them, don't, don't tell the Pharisees that they are hypocrites because they're going to get hurt. You hypocrites. You brood of vipers. That was the truth. Their feelings shouldn't come first. But when the feelings can accommodate, when the truth can accommodate feelings, then you accommodate the feelings. Okay? Let's stay on meekness. Meekness is a deliberate choice to refrain from utilizing a full right or authority for the benefit of someone else within the framework of the truth. Acts 13, 7, 8, and 10. Which was with the deputy of the, the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who was called Barnabas and Saul, desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas, this is Paul now ex exercising meekness. Somebody wanted to hear the word of God. Acts 13, 7, 8, 10, 11. Somebody wanted to hear the word of God, but Elimas, the sorcerer, came and stopped, tried to stop somebody from hearing the word of God. Do you know what Paul did to him? Paul commanded that he be blind. Remember, he didn't command him to die. They are two different things. He commanded him to be blind for a season. 
Why? Because the man was trying to stop the truth from going forth. So Paul was now firm and fierce. That's still part of meekness. Okay. Question two. Is meekness a sign of weakness? I need somebody to help me answer this. Is meekness a sign of weakness? No. Okay, that's a consensus answer. Okay. A weak person cannot fight back, but a meek person can fight back, but chooses not to. Do you understand the difference? Let me say you're doing bodybuilding and you're macho. And then, let me give you a practical example that happened. And when I was in, in the university, in my final years, that means we're already grown. There's this friend of mine. He was my best man. He normally go, do, does all these push-ups and all this strength thing and all that. And he was a Christian. He just got born again. And um, one of our classmates, when we're struggling to fetch water, one of our classmates who was smaller than him but thinks he's too strong tried to overshoot this my friend. This my friend tried to explain to him that what he was doing was wrong. Do you know what he did? He now challenges my friend. I don't know if, I can, if I can recall. He pushed him or something and said, look, if he talks, he's going to beat him. He's going to... Meanwhile, this my friend just looked at this. But it's like, look at this little rat. He was just looking at me because he just gave his life to Christ. The guy was still challenging him. He looked at me and said, Tim, this thing is not easy. Because he, all he needed to do was one hand, and that guy would go flying. He told me this thing. Do you know we, we left the place, and he was almost in tears. That's a sign of meekness. I like what this brother said. He said, wow, because it's not easy. Some, uh, let's, let's just move on. Okay, so, example, Moses, when the children... When the children of Israel wanted to return to Egypt and Moses and Aaron and Joshua Caleb was against it, look at what happened. Numbers 14, 10, 12, 19. But all the congregation bade to stone him. Now the congregation wanted to stone Moses. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be before they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them, even God was provoked with the children. I've done all these nice things for you, and you want to stone my servants? God was provoked. God said, wait, Moses, I will smite them with pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make of you a greater nation and mightier than they. If God comes to you and tells you that, what would you do? Look, some people you've been doing good things for, Nice things for helping. They now want to stone you simply because they didn't get a piece of meat or something. And God tells you, look, let me just help you finish them. And I will bless, I will use you and provide you with inheritance. I'm going to bless you. Let me just finish these people who are offending you. What will you do? Some of us will say, God, okay. And remove our face and let God finish them and give us inheritance. That's the normal thing. We might be laughing and saying it now because it's not, if it was real to us, we may have asked God to go ahead. Thou knowest all things. Thou art the mighty God. Go ahead and do thy will. Do you understand? But then Moses said no. Moses pleaded for in, oh, from verse 13 to verse 19. Making a case for them, these people who wanted to kill him. And Moses ended by saying, pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of all these people, according unto thy greatness, the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven these people from Egypt, even until now, and God pardoned. That is meekness. All Moses needed to do was just two letter word. Tell God, okay. Children of Israel would have been history. So yeah, that is meekness. Okay. I want to ask a question now. Are you meek? Are you meek? Let me be, excuse me, my, my brother. Are you meek? 
He said, God help us. <laughs> okay. Are you meek? Run Namdi. God help us. <laughs> okay. There are so many God help us in this. In the, okay. Yeah. Okay. Can, the, if you're meek, just raise your hand up. She says sometimes, no, that you, you can't be lukewarm. One word, the other. <laughs> meek, however, sometimes still lukewarm. Okay. Nobody says yes. Okay, who will say no? Are you meek? If your answer is no, raise your hand. This brother said, Are you meek, sir? No, he said no. Some people said, Did, did I get any yes? Somebody said yes, and somebody said, so yeah, so, are you meek? I couldn't get any, so, ha. you should know whether you're meek or not. Are you tall? Are you, are you, do you have money? You, you. You have money. Are you from Nigeria? You know, Okay. You can be mixed sometimes and not mixed other times. Me? You want to ask me? A whole me. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Okay. Let's find out whether we are meek or not. <laughs> okay. Matthew 11, 29. Jesus is meek. We know that Jesus is meek, don't we? Okay, we are going to think together. After that, I will ask the question. I'm not going to tell anybody whether you, me, or we. We're going to look at the Bible together, and we arrive at the same place together. Okay. Jesus is meek. Now, the spirit of Jesus is in you, and he is there with, he's there with his fruits. Who has the spirit of God? Raise your hand. Okay. Is the spirit of God meek? And you have the spirit of God. Oh, all of you are now meek, eh? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You are meek. You have the spirit of God in you. We know the fruit of the spirit. One of them is meekness. So, if you have the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit in you is meek. Now, have you, at some point, not exercised meekness? Yes? And you are meek? You. Jesus did it. What about you, man? Okay, so you, you are meek, but you've exercised things. You've exercised, once in a while, you exercise things that are not meek, right? Okay, does it stop you from being meek? So you are meek, but sometimes exercise things that are not meek. Okay, now we're heading somewhere. Meekness. Look at how it works here. Once you have Christ, you have the Holy Spirit, all the fruit of the Holy Spirit is in you. Whether you know it, like it or not, the Holy Spirit is there with his fruit. But now the question is, are you manifesting it? Are you manifesting it? The answer is, may be yes and no. Now look at why you may or may not be manifesting it. The flesh is what gets in the way of manifesting who you really are. See you, the spirit man. You have the soul, and you live in a body. The soul and the body always tries to get in the way of who you are showing out, manifesting. So what do you do to be able to manifest it? Since the, the flesh gets in the way, see you here, you're meek, you're, you're patient, your, you have all the qualities of the Holy Spirit, but the flesh gets in the way. What do you do? Get out of the way. You remove the flesh from the way, isn't it? So that you can manifest who you really are. Who is following me? Now look at what the Bible says about it. 
For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if through the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. Now, do you know how to put to death the, the deeds of the body? Who can tell me? Walking in the Spirit. Do you know you have the capacity to say no to things that make you not to show what's in your spirit man? Like, for example, this meekness thing. I received an email. That email, I didn't like it. It was going to cost me certain things, you know, business-wise. And I felt they were being trying to be manipulative. Hey, my flesh just said, what? What are you waiting for? Fingers, oh yeah? Start typing. Reply. I started typing, replying, typing, replying, typing, replying. You know, and I was right in my reply. But as I wanted to click send, I felt something in my spirit say no. So I looked at it. I didn't send it. Do you understand? That's how the flesh always wants to get in. If I had sent it, it might have triggered a lot of back and forth, which will be so time-consuming for me. I might, even, I might even have to take it legal. But, you know, so I, I, I didn't send. Now, look at what, one thing about the flesh. The Bible says that you have to put to death the deeds of the flesh. Paul says, I die daily. Do you know that when you put to death the deeds of the flesh today, it has expiring date. It's only 24 hours expiring date. When you wake up tomorrow, you have to put it to death again. And that tomorrow's one will not take you next tomorrow. That's why you, I got some answers of meekness, like sometimes. Maybe you put, you put your flesh to death yesterday. You forgot today. Or you put it day before yesterday. It's a daily thing. That's why even when I stand here preaching to you, teaching you or whatever, to, by the grace of God, it's your, it's your duty to keep checking in the word of God. Because I may have died yesterday and forgot to die today. So that's why the Bible says, I die daily. It's a daily thing. Once you wake up, it's time to put to death the flesh. You can't say, I succeeded yesterday and I can't, I'm not going to do it today and all that. So, no, question three. Three, are biblical examples... Are, these, are there biblical examples of meek people? Yes, we read about Moses. Now, Moses was the meekest. Moses was very meek above all men which were upon the face of the earth. So Moses was the meekest man on earth. Now, I want us to follow this very carefully. We have the Bible, and God has given us understanding. They wanted to kill Moses, and Moses would have, would have used a two-letter word to wipe them off. And then their generational blessings will come to Moses, but he didn't. God wanted to kill the children of Israel for Moses. Moses said no. Let's do some interactive Q&A. Was Moses meek? Yes. We all agree Moses was meek. Eh? Would Moses have asked God to kill his enemies? Who said, would Moses have asked God to kill his enemies? Who said yes? Who? Where are you? We just read now that Moses, God wanted to kill the children of Israel. And he said no. And you're telling me that Moses would have said, God, kill. Now, again, would Moses have asked God to kill people who wanted to kill him? The answer is no, because they wanted to stone him, isn't it? Everywhere is quiet. But he didn't. So, yeah, he didn't do it because he was meek, isn't it? And the Bible, God called him the meekest man on earth. Okay. Was Jesus meek? Did he, Jesus ask to kill his enemies? At any point, was there any point Jesus says he asked for his enemies, all those people who wanted to kill him, to be killed? So Moses was meek. He didn't ask to kill his enemy. Jesus was meek. He didn't ask to kill his enemy. Because you people are giving me the answers. I'm not putting anything on you. You know, we're, we're, we're looking at the word of God together. If Jesus were physically present 
And you had to pray, now we are meek, isn't it? All of us have agreed now that we have meekness, isn't it? I'm happy, I'm happy about that. Now we should now let it manifest. If Jesus were physically present and you had to pray for your enemy, which would you choose, A or B, if you are meek? A, to pray for all your enemies that God should forgive them for they know not what they do, no matter if they have made up their minds not to change. That's A. B, to pray that if they do not change, let them die. Which one would you pray? A. Anybody for B? Okay. B. Okay. Who are you imitating? Moses or Jesus? Which one? Jesus. Which part of the Bible did Jesus do it that you're imitating from? <laughs> Give me a passage. I'm with my Bible. Give me a passage. Let me find it, sir. There is not in the Bible, sir. Okay, okay, now let's 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 come. So what what I would like us to what I would like us to do is this. We are talking about meekness, are we not? Good. Let's stay on meekness, eh? <laughs> and we are going to stay on meekness with Okay, okay, okay. I ask the question while I Use the mic, eh? Okay, thank you very much, sir. All right, we'll, I'll just say one scripture and we we'll, we we'll move on because of time. Wow, I wish we had more time. Okay, give him to answer. Um, my question is very simple. Yeah. Uh, you made mention of the fact I'm all for praying for our enemies, you know, being meek. And the only thing you said, which I want a bit more clarification about, is you said when they choose not to repent, you know, there are people who are bent on seeing that you don't fulfill your God-given um, um, destiny, and they never relent, you know, they never relent. What do we do? Okay, praise God. Praise the Lord. Sorry, sorry, just to add to it, he said pray for your enemy. He didn't say the content of the prayer. Okay, that's fine. That, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I'm happy. I'm happy we are going into the Bible. I'm so, I'm so joyful because the Bible is, is super. Now, sir, you missed the verse on top, sir. Let, let me just read the verse on top before that one you read. It says, you have heard that, that's verse 43. You have heard that it had been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. It is impossible to pray that someone should die through a spirit of love. Because the Bible says, Pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. The Bible, Stephen gave an example. Father, forgive them. This one, they didn't say he should die. Oh, they were killing him. Forgive them for they know not what they do. If you see the New Testament, when Jesus came, it was just full of forgive them for they know not what they do. Forgive them for they know not what. Because the Bible says, hey, your weapons of warfare are not against flesh and blood. It's against the principalities and powers. Look at the strategy of the devil. Let me now expose the devil here now. Let me expose him. See what he does. He takes people and then uses people to attack people. He has so many people he can use who are serving him, who are into fetish things to attack people. Now, us Christians, what do we do? We now take our spiritual weapon and aim it at the people he's sending at us. Boy. Boy. Meanwhile, he's the one sending it. Now, if you, if you wipe out 20 people, he has two, 200 million more to use. That's why the Bible says we should aim our weapons not on flesh and blood, 
we should aim it at the core, principalities and powers. Because they are the ones making people do what they do. And he said, even if people do what they do, don't be afraid. For if your ways pleases the Lord, he will cause your enemy to be at peace with you. Do you understand? Otherwise, Paul would have been killed. Paul was the worst person the Bible recorded in the New Testament. Yet God saved him. God can save anybody, no matter what they say. Even if they say, I'm not going to repent until I, yeah, yeah, yeah. God can still save them. So our focus, love your enemies. If you know you cannot say a prayer with Jesus standing right there in front of you, don't say it. Simple. If you know Jesus, if he was physically beside you just watching you pray, and you cannot say that prayer, and back it up with the word, then don't say it. Because it's for me. I can say, Jesus, forgive that. My It's not easy. Oh. It's not easy. I've come to a point where I almost say, <laughs> I say, but God, why? You know, that kind of thing. It's not easy. But then we have to obey the Bible because that's what differentiates us from the world. Okay? So, let's rush through the next things because we've spent a lot of time on this. Okay. Lesson outline two. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. What does it mean to hunger and thirst? What I want to say before I move to lesson outline two is this. Please, I'm begging you. Whatever you do as a Christian, whatever you say as a Christian, if you don't have the backing from the word of God, don't do it. Don't say it. Even if it sounds logical. I've heard so many things that sound logical that the Bible has flawed. The Bible just flaws it. But if you speak it, it will sound so logical and all that. But when you read the Bible, it's different. And the Bible, there are levels of truths. There are truths that focus on physical logic. There are truths that go spiritual. The Bible truth comes from the spiritual. So that anything we cannot find in the Bible, even if I stand here and say, don't believe me, I tell my children, look, if I speak to you and tell you anything that's not in the Bible, don't accept it. Do you understand? So everything we do, we have to because we stand before God on that day. That's why the Bible says, Paul, imagine Berean Christian, Paul. Paul says, those people were more honorable because they checked him out. That means no matter who is on the surface of the earth, nobody can say they are better than Paul. And Paul said, go check me out if I preach to you. Go to the Bible and check whether what I'm telling you is true. That's your responsibility. You can't just come and sit, <laughs> okay, let me be fed and all that. That's good. But after, go check it out because I might be telling you something that's not in the Bible. How would you know if you don't check it out? That's why we have to have that Berean Christian mindset. If Paul says, check me out if I preach, preach to you, you can have, that's an injunction that you should check everything you hear out from the word of God and be sure that it's true. No matter how nice it sounds, even if I, I'm the one who tells it to you. Okay, now let's move on. Lesson outline two, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. What does it mean to hunger and thirst after righteousness? You can hunger for the acts of righteousness as it's written in the law. You know, you can hunger, Lord, I want to be kind. Lord, I want to be good. Lord, I want to be meek. Lord, I want to be humble. You can hunger and thirst after that. But what does that make you do? When you're now humble or kind, you feel okay, I've arrived. What about gentleness? What about patience? What about long-suffering? So if you hunger up for, for righteousness in bits and pieces, those bits and pieces of commandments, you might miss it. So what am I saying here? Because when you try to just obey the bits and pieces of commandments to get to heaven, that's the law. You're, trying to, you're thinking that the law will get you to heaven. No. The Lord will not get you to heaven. The person that gets you to heaven is Jesus Christ. Now, that's why it's good to hunger after righteousness, hunger after Jesus. Because when you get Jesus, the Bible says, and, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. So now you don't have your righteousness, which is of the law, which is Lord, righteousness of the law is do's and don'ts. That's not your righteousness now. Your righteousness is now through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is by God. How does this work? It simply means when I do something good, I'm not doing it because that will take me to heaven or hell. I'm doing it because I'm obeying Jesus. I'm doing it because Jesus asked me to do it. So I'm doing it by faith. What takes me to heaven is not the works of my, my deeds. It's what Jesus has done. But that doesn't mean now 
I will now decide to live anyhow. No, that means you're not even related, associated with Jesus. Never think that your works of righteousness will take you to heaven because it wouldn't. Jesus takes you to heaven. Therefore, that's why if you walk at humility and you've, you, there's patience left, Jesus will tell you, okay, why don't you do patience? Meanwhile, you're still heaven bound because it's not those your, your do's and don'ts that are taking you. It's Jesus. So you have a relationship with Jesus. You're exercising anger. Okay, Jesus, okay, Jesus will tell you to his word. Okay, work on your anger. You, hey, I, I'm struggling with uh, uh, pornography or something. Jesus will tell you, go to my word. Stay on my word. But this is, you have a relationship with Jesus. Meanwhile, is this Jesus that's taking you to heaven? Not those things you're doing. Those things you're doing are just your relationship with Jesus. Sometimes you might get it. Sometimes you might not get it right. But as long as you have that hunger and thirst after righteousness, Jesus will continue to tell you when you got it right or when you got it wrong. And you continue to walk and grow with Jesus. Okay. Question two. What are the promises of those who hunger and thirst after righteousness? If you hunger for Jesus, you will automatically hunger for his righteousness. Love God, love your neighbor, ask yourself. I want to say this, and I want to say this very emphatically. Love is the new commandment. No matter what you do, if you, the element of love in your life is shaky, do you know what you're doing? Let me tell you what you're doing. It says in Job 1.10, Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? God has, for every of his children, he has made a hedge around you. As you're standing here now, there's, God has put a hedge around you that the devil cannot penetrate. Mm -mm. That's why you shouldn't be... If somebody can do Baba Lawo, whatever, or I don't know what they can call your name, you just laugh. <laughs> it's not going to work. As the Bible says, the cause without a cause shall not come to light. Because the hedge is around you. But do you know what will happen? If you break the hedge, and you break it through lack of love. If you break the hedge, the hedge is around you, but you can break it. If you break one corner, mm, guess who's roaming around the hedge seeking for her to come in? So once you break one corner, mm, the serpent will come and bite. How do you break the corner? Lack of love. Let me... Let, 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 let me show you what the Bible says. In James 3, 16, it says, For where envy and strife is, that's lack of love. For where envy and strife is, you've broken the hedge. The devil will come in. He says, there is confusion and every evil work. Every evil work. Every sickness, disease, downturn, pain, sorrow, misery. Leave them. So if you break the rule of love, you broke the hedge. Serpent will not want to come and bite. So that's my, you should make sure the hedge is not broken. If it's cracked, you block it. Please forgive me. Forgive me. I, I'm sorry. You know, that's why the Bible says if you have something against your neighbor, leave your, look, your hedge is broken. Go and seal up your hedge first. Leave your gift on the table. Go and reconcile with that person. So the, the rule of love, you can't play with it. The devil is waiting for that rule of love to be broken. Let's pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for this Bible study. We pray that you help us to walk in love and that at the end of the day, we will not be found wanting when Jesus comes in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we be on our feet? Let's worship God. I want you to walk to one or two people like we usually do. Just walk to someone. Welcome them to service. Welcome them to service. Tell someone they look nice.
the supernatural church of which you can declare it in the spirit. Only you, only you can change, only you can fix, only you can heal every cancer, every fibroid, every arthritis, every, every headache, every migraine, every disease, every leukemia. Only you can do it. Only you can, only you can do it. your mercy are bound from generations to generations. Do we have living people in the house? Can you raise your voice and begin to declare the praise of our God? Can you begin to say, Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful for bringing me into the third Sunday in the month of July. This is only the finger of God that can propel and preserve a man. 
Do we have grateful people in the house? Raise your voice and say, Father, I have come to register my thanksgiving. I have come to register my thanksgiving to declare the praise of our Father. I am grateful, O oh God. I am grateful, O oh God. I am grateful, Father. What a mighty God you are. What a glorious Father you are. You alone deserve our praise. You alone deserve our worship. Oh, we bless your holy name, Jesus. mighty name we praise and worship hallelujah we just want to thank God for what the Lord has begun to do already in this month this is a very unique month and I believe that by the mercy of God the Lord is just starting with us in the name of Jesus uh, in accordance to the word of God that he has sent to us in this assembly uh, given by our father in the Lord in Isaiah 43 Isaiah 43 verse 19 which is one of our anchor scriptures. Isaiah 43 verse 19. I'm reading from the NLT translation. He said, for I am about to do something new. He said, see, tell your neighbor, see, I have already begun. Kale Sata. He said, do you not see it? I will make a path through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wastelands. One of the things by the mercy of God I will be praying about this morning in the next few minutes is for the Lord to anoint our eyes afresh. Is that the Lord will anoint our eyes afresh. See, a man's eyes can be opened but it's not seen. Your eyes can be opened but you are not seen. There are dimensions of God that can only be seen with the eyes of the Spirit. You know, even in the book of Genesis, in Genesis chapter number 1 verse 2, the Bible says the, the whole creation was full of darkness. One of the typical illustration of darkness is blindness. When there is absence of light, what do you say? If you have the chance to interrogate a blind man, ask him, what do you see? He sees darkness. So when there is the absence of light, it means that there is darkness. So the creation itself, was experiencing, experiencing a form of darkness. The creation was experiencing a form of blindness. But this is the mystery, brothers and sisters. In this kingdom, in this kingdom, we see to become. We see to become. So when the enemy attacks your sight, it's because he knows when you begin to see what the word says, only that you begin to transform into the very things you see. No wonder the Bible speaking in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. He said, as we behold, you know, in, in a mirror, we are being transformed into the same image because we see to become. And that's why the enemy is attacking your sight. He's attacking your vision. The word of the Lord says, I will make a way in the wilderness. I will make a way. He said, I have begun to make the way. But guess what? Even though God is making a way, some of us are not seeing the way. God has begun to make the way already. But we are blinded to what he has begun to make. You will raise your voice this morning. You will say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I want you to say it with every fiber in your beings. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Anoint my eyes afresh. Let me see the things that you want me to see. Open your heart, your mouth and begin to declare. Anoint my eyes, oh God. Anoint my eyes with the oil of the Spirit. Let me see what you want me to see. Let me see what you want me to see. In the name of Jesus. Anoint my eyes, oh God. Anoint my eyes, oh God. 
Anoint my eyes, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. The Bible speaking, he said, The God of this world has blinded the eyes of the children of light. The God of this world has blinded their eyes. Why is he so particular about your sight? It's because when God opens the eyes of a man to the many possibilities that are around him he begins to walk in supernatural dimensions so as long as the enemy can keep you blind the revelation that has come for us this month he said I will make a way in the wilderness so it's possible you are walking on gold mine it's possible that you are walking in a place that the wilderness has rivers flowing but you cannot see it the Bible speaking about Hagar Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness and the baby was about to die and she began to cry to God Lord save us so that we don't die what did the Bible say the Bible say and the Lord opened our eyes which means that there was already a river in the wilderness but Hagar did not see it you will cry with every fiber in your beans Lord there are opportunities abounding around me there are opportunities that I should be operating in right now Lord open my eyes to see them in the name of Jesus Open your mouth and declare the things I need to see, the things I need to see, the things I need to behold so that I can become, the things I need to behold so that I can become, the things I need to see so that I can become. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes like you opened the eyes of Hagar and she saw rivers in the desert. The desert was, the river was already there. God just had to open her eyes. Open her eyes, oh God. Open her eyes, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're going to pray one last prayer. You will say, Lord, as I have come to register my presence this morning, let my coming not be in vain. Listen, for every time there is a service, you know, there's a reason why they call it a service. When you take your car to the workshop, what does it do? When, you, when your car has run a couple of mileages, it comes to a point that it turns on the service, uh, service lights. And then you take it to the service station and they change the oil. They change some things. Why is it called service? Because certain things need to be changed to restore the car to the normal operating capability. When you appear before Zion, something needs to be changed. Your oil needs to be changed. Your prayer life needs to go to a new trajectory. And that is why you are here. You will open your mouth and say, Father, as I come to this service this morning, let my word locate me. Let my word find me. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray. The Lord sent my word. Sent my word. The word that is tailor made from the kitchen room of heaven. Sent my word, O God. We give you praise, O God. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you because in your presence there is fullness of joy. Thank you because we will not live here the way we came. In the name of Jesus, the Lord has begun with us already from the prayer session. I believe that there's a turning around for someone. Someone will walk out of this place and all of a sudden, where you used to be before, you begin to see opportunities. Things that were there, what you were blind to, God begins to open your eyes to them. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout a living amen. Slap your neighbor a high five and take your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Our Bible reading this morning will be taken from Exodus chapter number 30, from verse 1 to the end. Exodus 30, 1 to the end. Thank you, choir. your wood for burning incense. It is to be square, a cubit long, and a cubit wide, and two cubits high. Its horns of one piece with it. Overlay the top and all the sides and the horns with pure gold, and make a gold molding around it. Make two gold rings for the altar below the molding, two on each of the opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. 
Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Put the altar in front of the curtain that shields the Ark of the Covenant Law before the atonement cover that is over the tablets of the Covenant Law where I will meet with you. Aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he tends the lamps. He must burn incense again when he lights the lamps at twilight, so incense will burn regularly before the Lord for the generations to come. Do not offer on this altar any other incense or any burnt offering or grain offering, and do not pour a drink offering on it. Once a year, Aaron shall make atonement on its horns. This annual atonement must be made with the blood of the atoning sin offering for the generations to come. It is most holy to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, When you take a census of the Israelites to count them, each one must pay the Lord a ransom for his life at the time he is counted then no plague will come on them when you number them. Each one who crosses over to those already counted is to give a half shekel, according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 giras. This half shekel is an offering to the Lord. All who cross over, those 20 years old or more, are to give an offering to the Lord. The rich are not to give more than a half shekel, and the poor are not to give less when you make the offering to the Lord to atone for your lives. Receive the atonement money from the Israelites and use it for the service of the tent of meeting. It will be a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord, making atonement for your lives. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a bronze basin with its bronze stand for washing. Place it between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die. Also, when they approach the altar to minister by presenting a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants for the generations to come. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much, that is, 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel and a hin of olive oil. Make these into a sacred anointing oil of fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. It will be the sacred anointing oil. Then use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the Ark of the Covenant Law, the table and all its articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, and the basin with its stand. You shall consecrate them so they will be most holy, and whatever touches them will be holy. Anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them so they may serve me as priests. Say to the Israelites, this is to be my sacred anointing oil for the generations to come. Do not pour it on anyone else's body and do not make any other oil using the same formula. It is sacred and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes perfume like it and puts it on anyone other than a priest must be cut off from their people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take fragrant spices, gum resin, onica and galbanum, and pure frankincense, all in equal amounts, and make a fragrant blend of incense, the work of a perfumer. 
it is to be salted and pure and sacred. Grind some of it to powder and place it in front of the Ark of the Covenant Law in the Tent of Meeting, where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. Do not make any incense with this formula for yourselves. Consider it holy to the Lord. Whoever makes incense like it to enjoy its fragrance must be cut off from their people. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Good morning, church. I believe we're excited to be in God's presence this morning. If you're excited, can you just clap unto the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I bring you greetings from our senior pastor and our associate pastor. They send their love and we pray that the grace of God, the goodness of God and God's mercy will be multiplied upon them in Jesus' name. I want to thank God for their lives and for this opportunity given unto me to share the word of God with the people of God. And I believe that God will do wonders in our lives today in Jesus' name. And we pray that the oil of God upon their lives will not run dry in Jesus' name. We pray for fresh grace, fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. I want to thank God for the life of our ministers, for their prayers, and for their support. I pray God will bless them abundantly in Jesus' name. And I want to thank God for your life, those that are on site, and those that are watching online, and those that will watch later. I pray that God will touch your life in the name of Jesus. New opportunities will spring forth in your life in Jesus' name. Can I hear a resounding amen? amen? Can we rise up this morning as we worship God and we pray? Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's coming my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season and it's coming to me. Lift your voice and say, It's a new season. It's a new to lift up your voice and declare it. I want you to turn it to prayer this morning. I want you to turn it to prayer. Father, Lord, thank you. It's a new season of power for me. It's a new season of prosperity for me. Newness is here for me. Newness is here for me. Is somebody praying this morning? Newness is here for me. New opportunities has come my way. New opportunities, restored opportunities, they have come my way today. I receive new healing. I receive new healing. I receive new healing in my bones, 
in my body, in my soul, in my spirit. New strength is here for me. New connections are here for me. New elevations are here for me. It's our month of new opportunities and restored opportunities. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word that faileth not. Thank you for your word that changeth not. Thank you for the deliverance in your word. Thank you for the manifestation in your word. Thank you for the power in your word. Thank you for the transformation in your word. Thank you for the newness in your word. Thank you for the restoration in your word. Thank you for the revival in your word. For the Bible says you honor your word more than your name. Thank you because the word has come forth today. The Bible says it sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them from every oppression. Thank you for deliverance in the house this morning. Thank you for setting the captives free. Thank you for delivering the oppressed. Thank you for saving souls. We bless your holy name. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. We bow before you, O oh God. We bow before you, our King, our Maker, wonderful Counselor, Eternal God, loving Father, we bow our heart before you. We bow our knees before you. We bow our head before you. For there is none like you. Blessed be your holy name, O God. Move in a mighty way today. Take away every form of distraction. Every spirit of buying and selling. We come against them in the name of Jesus. Let the glory of God envelop everyone in this house today. And by the end of today's service, let there be a mighty revival in our lives. Let the people that saw us coming in, when they will see us going out, they will know that, yes, we have encountered God. We have encountered God. Thank you, Jehovah Lord. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you this morning. Let's be seated in the presence of God. God bless you. Hallelujah. It's our month of new opportunities and restored opportunities. I want to encourage somebody this morning. I remembered when our senior pastor, God spoke through him to give us the word for this month. And the title is New and Restored Opportunities. On the first day of July, I was just somewhere, you know, praying, and I joined the service online. And then after the service, you know, God spoke to me. And God, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, do you remember the theme of this year, 2022? That, the, that God gave us in your past, at the start of this year, I went, you know, search, look at my notes. At the start of this year, do, does anyone remember? What's our theme for this year? Yes, sir. Double, God bless you, sir. Double, God bless you, man. God bless you, everyone. Double restoration, as found in Isaiah 61, verse 7. And the word of God has come to us again. New opportunities, restored opportunities. And I started, you know, doing a research, digging deep into the scriptures since the first of this, of this month. And I want to read our theme for this year, Isaiah 61, verse 7. It says, for your shame, ye shall have double. And for your confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. I want you to prophesy into your life and repeat after me. Say, for my shame, I shall receive double. For confusion, I shall rejoice in my portion. Therefore, in my land, I shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be unto me. Everlasting joy shall be unto Jubilee Church. Everlasting joy shall be unto everyone represented in this church. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. 
And Joel chapter 2 verse 25 says, I will restore unto you the years that the swami locust, the pampa worm, the kama worm has eaten. And this is the word of God. The Bible says, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard that power belongs to God. So double restoration is our theme. And in the middle of the year, the word of God has come to us again as restored opportunity. I don't know if you're, if you're getting what I'm talking about. I pray God will open our eyes in the name of Jesus. We have prayed, our minister has prayed for us for open eyes. God opened my eyes to so many things. And those things that, you know, the research I've been doing is what I want to share with you this morning. So that God will bless us. God will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Today I'll be talking about creating an atmosphere for new and restored opportunities. Creating an atmosphere. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I can't hear your amen. amen. God said, forget. This is the word of God. I'm just a vessel. But God is the one telling you. I've, I'm a messenger here sent to God to tell you that God says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. God says, I am doing a new thing. And the next one says, now it springs up. Our God is a God of now. And he is a God of new. Oh, hallelujah. Now he is doing a new thing. Now he is blessing you. Now he is restoring you. Now he is healing you. Now things are springing forth for you. New opportunities is here now. Because that is what the Bible says. It said, now, you might not see it. It might not be clear. You know, in the account of First King chapter 18, from verse 43, Elijah told his servant, <laughs> he says, go and look out. For there is going to be an abundance of rain. The man of God went and said, ah. Prophet, what are you talking about? I can't see anything. He went the first time, the second time. He got to the seventh time. As a first King 18 from verse 45 downward. In this, this, when it was seven times, in this seventh month, there shall be an abundance of rain. I see the sound of an abundance of rain. I see your level changing. Now God is doing it. New connections is here for you. New relationship is here for you. Amen. Something new is coming. Amen. Something new is coming. Amen. The baby is coming. Amen. The relationship is coming. Amen. The contract is coming. Amen. The promotion is coming. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Purpose and destiny are rising up. Amen. I said purpose and destiny are rising up. In Jubilee Church, chains are broken. Amen. Enlargement is here now. Amen. Emancipation is here now. Amen. Revival is here now. Amen. Transformation is here now. Amen. In JCM, RCCG, Manchester, new influence. Amen. New connection is here now. Amen. These are the words of God. Please don't joke with the words I'm saying. Generational causes are broken now. Generational causes are broken now. Amen. Evil patterns are broken now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. they are broken now. Amen. God of now will do it. Amen. Now it springs forth. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. new things are happening in the name of Jesus. Amen. But you have a part to play. <laughs> You need to create an atmosphere for the manifestation of those new opportunities and restored opportunities. If you have lost any opportunity in the first half of this year, 2022, by the power that created the heavens and the earth, by the power that called Enoch Adejari Adepoye, 
by the power that sent our senior pastor and his wife to the land of Manchester, those lost opportunities, those lost glory, those lost privileges, they are restored now. Now they are restored. They are restored now. They are restored now. They are restored now. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How do we create an atmosphere for new opportunities and restored opportunities? Before we look at the how, I just want to tell you what does it mean to create. To create means to generate, to make up, to initiate, to set up, to build up, to design. So I'm giving you ideas of what you need to be thinking about, how you, what you want to do for the rest of this month and for the rest of this year. Because God wants us to create. For the God we serve is a God of creation. So to design, to create means to design, to establish, to establish, to develop. For God, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 verse, it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He sent his light in verse 3. It says, let there be light and there was light. So that is the power in the word of God. Creation comes through the power in the word of God. Our God is a God of creation. So for us to be able to create an atmosphere, you need the word of God. The word of God has creative ability. If something has not been existing before, if you are a child of God, you have the grace and the ability to be, to be able to create it. The word of God has descriptive ability. That's why the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, when God, sent, when, when God uh, created Adam, he said, all these things that I've created, begin to give them names. He started giving them names in that Genesis chapter 1, and the names that he gave them was the name that God, you know, made to be manifest upon their lives. So the one of God has descriptive and creative ability. So for you to create an atmosphere, you need the word of God to be able to help you to do that. Then number two is, what do we mean by atmosphere? Creating an atmosphere. An atmosphere in Genesis chapter 1 verse, from verse 6, from verse 6 to 8, the Bible says, Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. The firmament there talks, means atmosphere. Firmament means heaven. The synonyms for atmosphere is the heavens. So when we talk about firmament, we are talking about an atmosphere. An atmosphere of heaven. An atmosphere of the presence of God. An atmosphere of the beauty of God. An atmosphere of joy. An atmosphere of new blessings. So for you to be able to enjoy the new opportunities and the restored opportunities, you have to have an atmosphere. An atmosphere. <laughs> an atmosphere of increase. You have to be able to create, you, have to, you need to have the capacity to be able to rule your atmosphere. Do away with whatever negativity that people are saying. Don't let it enter into you because it will alter your atmosphere. It will alter your countenance. Hallelujah. Yeah. God will touch us and do mighty things in our lives in Jesus' name. Yeah. God will give us an atmosphere of his presence and his joy in Jesus' name. How do we create an atmosphere that will bring about the manifestation of new and restored opportunities? Number one is have a new mindset. Have a new mindset. Have a new thinking. God says he will do a new thing. You might, it might not appear that the things are, you, are, you are seeing it now, but that doesn't mean that God is not doing it. God is working it out. Even when we don't see it, the song says, even when we don't see it, it is working. God is working, even when you cannot see. Because the Bible says there, it says, it's even a question. I say, do you not perceive it? So when we don't see it, God is working. God is working. So you need to have a new mindset and a new thinking. The Bible says, as a man thinker, so he is. As you think. So a new mindset is doing away with the old ways of doing things. Old ways will not work. Take away the old because the old, they are blocking the new things from manifesting. It's like you're having a wardrobe in your house. And you have, you know, some of your friends send you a new set of clothes, new 
clothes and you have old clothes in the cupboard, what do you need to do? To, you create space for the new. So you take away the old so that the new can be put in the, in the cupboard. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 9, verse 16. Matthew 9, 16. The Bible says, no one sews a patched or unshrunk clothes on an old garment. For the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. So you don't take an old clothes and, you know, patch it to a new cloth. It will destroy it. And the Bible says, neither do people pour a new wine into old wine skin. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out. And the wine skins will be ruined. No. They pour new wine into new wine skin. And both are preserved. So you need to change your wine skin. Change, change, your, change your wine skin. I don't know the bottle you're using, but I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to somebody this morning. So you don't put old wine into the new. It will burst. And then you will not be able to benefit. You, you won't enjoy the old. You won't enjoy the new. I pray that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two is activate your faith. How do I create an atmosphere? Activate your faith. The Bible says, if thou believe... All things are possible. All things are possible to him that believe. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark 9, 23. He says, all things are possible to him that believe. And John chapter 11, verse 40 says, if thou believe, you will see the glory of God. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. And then Luke 1, Luke 1, 45. Luke 1, 45, the Bible says, And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told of her from the Lord. So this is what God is telling us in Jubilee Church. So blessed are you that believe. We need to believe. People used to say that seeing is believing, but that doesn't work in the Christendom. You believe before you see. You believe then you will see. And when you see, whatever you see, you will receive. And that is what you will become. If you can see it, then you can get it. Hallelujah. May God, we have prayed that God should anoint our eyes. It's a serious matter for us to be able to know and see the purposes and the plans of God for our lives. So if you, you need to believe, then you will see. And when you see, you will be able to receive the new opportunities and then the restored opportunities then you will become all that God wants us to become in Jesus name number three is prepare for it we need to prepare for the new opportunities and the restored opportunities Proverbs chapter 16 verse 1 Proverbs 16 verse 1 the Bible says the preparations of the heart in man. So in the heart of man you prepare. And the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So for these new opportunities and restored opportunities, we need to prepare for it. So that God can dispatch those opportunities into our lives. So you make preparations for it. We have to get to... Um, Two case studies in the Bible, I'll just, there are so many, but we need to prepare for these opportunities to be made manifest in our lives. Example in the, in the scripture is 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 3. We need to prepare. Tell your neighbor, prepare. So 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 3 says, we know the story, the account of the woman with the two sons. He met with the prophet. He says, he told the prophet that, oh, your, your servant is dead now, and then they are owing, you know, they are owing a lot of people, and the creditors, the one, I'm just paraphrasing it because of time, the creditors have come to take their children, you know, as bond servant. So the woman cried to the man of God, to Elisha, he said, so Elisha now told him, what do you want me to do? What is it that you have in the house that, you know, we can pray upon, that you can prepare so that God will give you new opportunities. He will open new doors for you and will bring about restoration. In verse 3, it says, Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, 
even empty vessels, borrow not a few. So the, the, man, the, 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 the prophet told him, go and borrow vessels. So in our preparation for new opportunities, because the capacity is going to be very big, the opportunity is going to be very big. It's going to be massive. So only you cannot handle it. So you need to go and borrow ideas from people. Go and borrow skills. Go and borrow and learn. And learn new ways so that you, have, you are prepared. People used to say when opportunities meet preparation, what happened? Yes, sir. Success. Amen. So, you need to prepare for it. He says, go and borrow because the capacity is going to be large. So, you need to build capacity. So, you need to build capacity for the new opportunities that we are talking about. Build capacity for the new opportunities. Go and learn new skills. Borrow skills from people. New ideas. Borrow capacity from others because you cannot handle it alone. That is part of the preparation. Also in 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 43 downwards, Elijah made preparation for the new opportunity, for the abundance of rain. He, he prayed. He was praying. So you need to go to God in prayers. You need to go to God in prayer, in, in prayers, in praying and fasting, in worship, seeking his face, in humility. That is part of the preparation. Elijah did the same thing. He prayed. He prayed. And the servant said, man of God, prophet, I can't see anything. He went the first time. Up to the seventh time. Before he now said, okay, I can see a small hand. I can see the cloud gathering together. And there was abundance of rain. Abundance of rain is coming. Our way in the name of Jesus. Amen. You that you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I have a word for you from God. Go and prepare for it. Go and prepare. Buy toys. Buy baby toys. Because the baby is coming. Something new is coming. By this time next year you will come. And testify to the glory of God. The fruit of the womb is coming. The baby is coming. Go and make preparation for it. Activate your faith. Buy toys. Hey, buy baby toys for the baby is coming in the name of Jesus. Number four is have a new spiritual perception. Have a new spiritual perception. To perceive means to discern, to recognize, to think, and have divine sensitivity. Have divine sensitivity. Be sensitive. How, what, do, what do we need to be sensitive to? Be sensitive to the word of God. Be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Ghost. And when the voice comes, take action. Don't just sit down and fold your hands. For the word has come, the voice of God has come. Respond quickly. Respond quickly to the word of God. When negativity comes or setting into your heart, you, need, you have the word of God. If you, are, if you are anxious, if you are anxious for anything, the word of God says, be anxious for nothing. If you have anything that is bringing fear into inside of you, the Bible says, fear not, for I have not given you the, sp the spirit of fear. So when those things come in, begin to immediately respond quickly. Tell your neighbor, respond quickly. You need to respond quickly to the word of God that says, fear not, be not ashamed. God has not given us the spirit of, begin to confess those words. Take action. That is the way to be sensitive to the, to, to the word of God and be sensitive to be able to create an atmosphere for the manifestation of new opportunities and restored opportunities. Number five is divine alignment. Divine alignment. I want to encourage us. Be in alignment with God, your maker. God is the one that created us in his image. Be in alignment with God, your maker. I'll just give us some things that happens when we are not in alignment. And I will, I will make an illustration that will buttress my point. If we are not in alignment with God, life becomes difficult. If you are not in alignment with God, Simple things, they become hard. 
simple things, they become hard. When you are not in alignment, <laughs> I'm sure I'm speaking to somebody this morning. If you are not in alignment with God, opportunities are lost. Jonah, one of our anchor scripture, God spoke to him in Jonah chapter 1. He disobeyed God. He wasn't in alignment with God. If not for the mercy of God that, you know, dealt with him to bring him back into the alignment and the purpose of God. So opportunities are lost. We pray God will show us mercy in the name of Jesus. I will give us an illustration of what I mean by being in alignment with God. And I will use an example of, you know, our car. You know, when we talk about cars, you know, <laughs> Minister Emmanuel is as if he has, you know, he has seen my note. He was talking about cars as well. So I want to use the example of cars to make an illustration. When you take your car, you know, for servicing, for you to, for you to be in alignment, what are the benefits, the benefits of your car being in alignment? When your car is in alignment, I will give you five benefits. Number one, it reduces the wear and tear on your tire. As I'm saying it, illustrating it with the car, I want us to begin to, you know, compare it with our spiritual life. Number one, it reduces wear and tear in your tire. Number two, it provides maximum tire life. It provides maximum tire life. Number three, it enhances fuel economy and saves fuel. We all know the price of fuel now. So your car needs to be in alignment. It will save you fuel. It enhances fuel economy and it saves fuel. Number four, it improves handling. It improves handling. That means it's easier for you to handle your steering wheel when your car is in alignment. It increases driving safety. It increases driving safety. So my illustration now, so just connect it with our spiritual life as a child of God. The only safe place for you as a child of God is in alignment with God. Is in alignment with God. What is God saying? Are we ignoring his voice? Are we ignoring, like Jonah, he did as if he didn't hear God. <laughs> when our life is a safe place, if not, he wouldn't have gotten into the mouth of, you know, of the fish. But God showed him mercy. So that is the only safe place for us as children of God. New opportunities spring up. Restoration takes place in our lives. And then rest, rest on every side is our portion in the name of Jesus. What are the hindrances? So we've talked about how to create an atmosphere. Our time is really running out. So what are the hindrances of new opportunities and restored opportunities? They are forces that hinders new opportunities in the life of a believer, of a child of God. Number one is sin. Sin. It hinders new opportunities and restored opportunities in the life of a Christian. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 verse 34... Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. The acronyms of sin I've written here is, is the acronyms I've gotten here is success in nothing. So sin is success in nothing. So sin hinders new opportunities and restored opportunities. Just like the way we have, we, all of us, we've done mathematics, you know, when we're in school and some people are still doing mathematics. In mathematics, it, in the field of math, there are four, the four major operations in math. Four major ones. We have addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division. So I'm sure even, please, I want us to remember, this, even if we don't remember anything today, but remember this. There are four operations in math, and there are also four operations in, in the area of sin. Number one, sin adds to your sorrow. Sin multiplies your trouble. 
Sin divides your energy. And sin subtracts from your success. He said, I say it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Four operations in math. Four operations in the area of sin. <laughs> sin adds to your sorrow. Sin multiplies your trouble. Sin divides your energy. Sin subtracts from your success. I pray that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Sin reduces a man to a loaf of bread. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 26. It reduces a man. It takes away the strength of a man. Sin gives strength to the enemy. Sin is a destroyer. If you are living in sin, I've just come to beg you today. Change your ways. Change your life. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. He says, therefore, having these promises, these promises we are talking about, all these opportunities, they are there for us. Children of God, God is doing wonders. God is doing wonders. New opportunities, restored opportunities. I'm telling you, you might not see it now, but God is doing it. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let us cleanse ourselves from every filthiness. Let us cleanse ourselves from every form of strife, every form of cheating, every form of hatred, every form of envy, immorality, adultery. Cleanse yourself from the filth. These things are, they are filthy, filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Someone that lives in sin, you see the atmosphere, the, the, all the uh, uh, aura around you will be, will be smelling. The angels of God cannot visit such a person. We pray God will destroy the power of sin in our lives in Jesus' name. Sin will not have dominion over us in the name of Jesus. You see, it is better to reject the worm than struggle with the hook. It is better, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. It is better to reject the worm than struggle with the hook. I will explain. A fisherman goes to the river to fish. He wants to catch a big fish. A big fish. You are the anointed one. You are the, the big fish. And Satan has his, you know, his uh, hook. He puts a worm on it. Hmm? It puts a worm on it. So, it is better to reject the worm than struggle with the hook. You know, when a fisherman goes fishing, he throws it into it. The big fish says, ah, it's the big fish is looking at the worm, but it's not looking at the hook. So, when the big fish, the anointed one, goes for the worm with the sin, thinks he wants to eat the worm, it gets entangled in the hook. We all know what happens to such a fish. Blood will begin to come out from that fish. And the fish will just die. So I'm encouraging us this morning. <laughs> it is better to reject the worm than struggle with the hook. So whatever you are struggling with, this is a place of deliverance this morning. We're going to pray. My time is really running, but we're going to pray. The problem with struggling with the hook is that you may not remain alive to tell the story. <laughs> the problem of struggling with the hook is that you may not remain alive. If not for the mercy of God, Jonah would have died. How can somebody be in the, in the stomach of a fish for three days? Ah. The problem with struggling with the work is that you may not remain alive to tell the story. This is a serious matter. You are a child of God. The grace and the mercy of God is upon you. And you are living in sin. Don't you know that you are a marked man? The Bible says, for I bear upon me the mark of Christ. 
Therefore, let no man trouble me. Let me give you an illustration now. You are a marked man in the field of life. People that watch football very well, if you have a football team now, I'm just giving us illustrations. So all these things will help us to remember, you know, what I'm talking about. If somebody like Ronaldo is on the field, Ronaldo and some, you know, very important players that they are scorers, they are on the field. You know that it's not only one person that goes to mark them. They are marked men. Yes, I get what I'm saying. They are marked men, at least. If it's just an ordinary person or a lukewarm Christian, they can they might not even allow, they might not even send any any, you know, the opponent to go and stay with him. It's a lukewarm Christian. It's just an ordinary person. So leave him. But if it's somebody like you are a scorer, you are anointed, you carry the glory of God. You decree and declare. You bind the devil. You speak to people. People's lives are transformed. People's destiny are changed. They enter into their glory. Brethren. You are a marked man in the field of life. So you cannot joke with your life. Because the people that are marking you is not just one person. Demon 101 has connected with Demon 107. They are waiting for you. <laughs> Where you will make a mistake. And they will attack. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. The blood of Jesus will avail for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two is self-will. Self-will. I'll just quickly read through this. Self-will, they come from pride. So new opportunities, restored opportunities, let the spirit of pride be destroyed in your life. Self-will is pleasing oneself, especially in opposition to the will of God. Another word for self-will is stubbornness and arrogance. Jonah failed the test of self-will. He did his own will. He disobeyed the will of God. Even though God gave him a second chance. Like I said, self-will comes from pride. <laughs> Children of God, you might think you are not proud, but you need to examine your life. Pride is a serious matter affecting a lot of Christians. Pride is the sin of angels from heaven. I've written so many things about pride here, but I don't have the time. Pride is the sin of angels from heaven that made God to throw them down. Pride is when you are too big for God to use you. Pride is when you find it difficult to say, I don't know, or you are too big to apologize and make peace. God hates the sin of pride, and anybody with pride cannot be used by God Almighty. Pride is when you see the fault of others but refusing to see your own fault. Pride is a terrible disease. It has destroyed many churches. It has destroyed many marriages, many businesses. So many lives has been destroyed because of pride. Pride opens the door to other sin to come into the life of, of, of a person. Like greed, anger, envy. Pride is the sin of Lucifer. So if you are living in pride, God will deliver you today in Jesus' name. Many people, many Christians, we, we speak proud words, but we, 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 are, we don't know. We speak proud words. Yesterday, I had coffee with the Pope. Who is asking you about that? You had coffee with the Pope. You sat down with the president. You were in London. From London, you went to Paris. You spent the night in Rome. I was in Dubai, then to Japan, then to Thailand, to Colombia. You talk, 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 talk. Even when they don't ask you. These are proud words. You might not know because you are the one saying it, so you just believe that you are not proud. See the way God dealt with Jonah. He had a second chance. And the second chance has come to us today. Thank you, Jesus. Another one is disobedience. We pray God will deliver us from disobedience in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet. There are so many things to talk about, but... I don't have the time, but I want us to pray. I pray if they just give me like two, two minutes just to, to pray. Hallelujah. We want to pray. We want to pray. What is today's date? 17th of the seventh month. 
Let's open to Genesis chapter 8, verse 4. Genesis chapter 8, verse 4. We are going to read it together. Come out, media apples. Genesis 8, verse 4. Hallelujah. What me there? Genesis. Okay, can we read together? I want to. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. Today is the seventeenth day in the seventh month. This is what the word of God is saying. The ark rested. Lift up your hands to the Almighty God and say, Father, my father, my father, give me rest on every side. Give me rest on every side. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, give me rest. Give me rest. Give me rest from every trouble. Give me rest from every evil pattern in my life. Give me rest from every trouble. Give me rest, oh God, on every side. I pray for 360 degrees rest today. My Father, my Father, give me rest. Give me rest. Give me rest. Thank you, multimedia. God bless you. Ah, somebody call Robo Semprolicata. Pray, 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 pray in the name of Jesus. Father, give me rest. Give me rest. Give me rest on every side. Give me rest on every side. According to your word, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 4, on the seventeenth day, in the seventh month, the ark rested. Father, I want to rest. Give me rest on every side. Give me rest on every side. In the name of Jesus. Give me rest on every side. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Say, Father. I can't hear you. Say, Father. Every force, every power, every woman, every establishment, that does not want me to have rest. Oh God, arise. Touch them today. Touch them today. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Every institution, every establishment, every force, every power, every organization that does not want me to enjoy rest. Oh God, touch them today. Touch them today. Pray for your children. Pray for your children. I see somebody here today. Pray for your children. That child that is not giving you rest. Oh, something new is happening right now. <clears throat> something new is happening right now. Something new is happening right now. My children will give me rest. That child will give you rest. That your child will give you rest. The power of God is here today. I receive rest on every side. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I cast out every negative atmosphere around me. Surround me with an atmosphere of miracles. Envelope me with new glory, new opportunities, new beauty. Turn into prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, I cast out in Jubilee Church, in my family, every negative atmosphere, every negative atmosphere. Oh God, envelope me. Envelope me with new glory. Envelope me with new opportunities. Envelope me with new beauty. Envelope me with new, new possibilities. In the name of Jesus. New mercy, new favor. Come into my life. Come into this church. Come into my home. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say with me, say, I say no to the atmosphere of quarrel, atmosphere of disunity, atmosphere of misunderstanding in our marriages, in our families, in our businesses. We say no. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The Bible says, for the grace of God that brings us salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to say no to ungodliness. We say no to ungodliness. We say no to immorality. We say no to sin. We say no to disunity in Jubilee Church. We say no to death. We say no to sickness. We say no to discord. We say no to darkness. 
in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray I want us to pray for our senior pastor and I also say pastor say father we pray for your son and your daughter give them rest open your mouth and pray pray from the bottom of your heart give them rest on every side we pray for your son pastor Bimbola Komalafe pastor Pisi Komalafe give them rest give them rest give them rest ah is somebody praying this morning give them rest on every side everything you've committed into their hands give them rest in the name of Jesus 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 in the life of the ministers in the life of leadership of Jubilee Church in the life of the men in the life of the women in the life of our youth give us rest in the life of our children give us rest 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 on every side in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray finally as I round up if there's anyone here you want to give your life to Christ can you just lay your right hand upon your chest just lay your right hand upon your upon your chest you want to give your life to Christ or you want to rededicate your life to Christ the power of God is here to heal, to deliver, to set free. Just lay your right hand upon your chest and then just raise up your left hand. Put your right hand upon your chest, raise up your left hand. For God is touching you right now. If you are online, just put a message on the online chat and we will reach out to you. And say with me that Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for saving me. I surrender my heart to you. Please forgive me my sins. Wash me clean in the blood of Jesus. Take control of my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Like a champion, like a, somebody that is victorious this morning, somebody that has been set free, can you shout the powerful hallelujah? Number two, shout hallelujah. Three, shout hallelujah. Four, shout hallelujah. Number five, shout hallelujah. Six, shout hallelujah. Seven, jump up and shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want us to appreciate God for the word we have received this morning. You want to lift your voice to God and say, Father, I thank you for the word I have received. I thank you for the vessel that you have used. You want to speak to God concerning the word that the enemy will not steal this word from your heart in the name of Jesus. And you say to God, Lord, I receive grace to be a doer of this word. I receive grace to be a doer and this word shall bear fruit in my heart, in my life, in the name of Jesus. The mercies of God will prevail over my life. You want to do that? Tell, tell God that. Tell yourself and speak over yourself the word you have received. And the mercies of the Most High God shall become manifest and obvious in your life through the word you have received this morning. And we pray for the vessel that the Lord has used, the King Bonashi Aino, and speak over his life. And say, Lord, we thank you for this vessel. We commit him into your hands, O God. Your mercy shall prevail over his life. He shall experience rest. He shall encounter rest in the name of Jesus. And his life shall be aligned unto God. You want to pray for yourself one more prayer point? Lord, my life shall be, shall be in alignment with you, O God. In my everything I do in my heart, let my life be in alignment, divine alignment. Alignment in every area. I receive grace to be obedient to you, to be a, obedient to the world, and I may eat the good of the land. We thank you, precious Father. We give you all the praise because there is no one like you. Thank you for the word you sent this morning. Thank you for your son you've used. You said you sent forth your word and you healed them. We receive the word that have come to correct, to transform, to shaping our lives and destinies. We thank you for your son, our senior pastor, and his wife, Pastor Bisi Komolafe. We ask you that grace be made available unto them. Their lives will also be in alignment with you all the time. They will hear what heaven is saying part time, and they'll be doers of your word. We give you praise, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Hallelujah. Amen. You want to have your seat? God bless you.
We thank God for that word, Sam. May God bless you and enlarge your coast. It will increase you all around. And in hearing, you will hear. In seeing, you will see. And you continually be relevant in the scheme of God's agenda. God bless you in Jesus' name. Are we excited what we had this morning? We we'll bless God for that and it's time to honor God with our substance. Amen. Uh, we want to also be in alignment with our substance with God. You know, there's something that Paul said in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 5. He said the people at the church of Corinth, they gave themselves first. They gave everything about themselves to God. And when they gave everything about themselves to God, they gave all their substance. So when you have given your heart completely to God, it becomes not a business, not an issue for you to give to God's kingdom. When we give into God's kingdom, is a covenant responsibility to sow into God's work. It is not a gambling game. When I give two, I get four. It doesn't work that way. You give out of love from your heart. Love that you have for God. That Lord, I love you so much and I'm going to give this to the work that is being done here on earth. So when you're putting your offering together, don't think about giving God a change. Just give something from your heart. And this comes to my heart well. Jesus was there watching them giving offering. And everybody was giving and a widow woman gave. Everyone wanted to see the woman give to my, so I'm going to give a might as well. But the truth was that she gave all she had. And Jesus commended her for that. I want to encourage you, your offerings, your tithes, your pledge, there's a time to give it to God with honor. Let it have some taste of honor in it. Amen? And we give through different means. You can give online if you're watching online. You can also give by texting to 8882 and you can also give by bank transfer. So we encourage you as much as possible. Put a thought into what you're giving this morning. Let us bless the Lord together. Amen? Let the sweat that you put together this week and this month, the seed that came, put it together. Let it speak for you before the courts of heaven. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's be on our feet as we give our offerings, please. Hallelujah. Let's put those hands together. Come on. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah.
Ja. God has done. You'll have a new dance step. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we're still going to dance, but let's just uh, pray over the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We are so grateful unto you because it is out of the abundance of that which you have given unto us that we have brought this token. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will accept it, Amen. you will bless it, and you will use it for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. we pray, O oh Lord, that Lord, every hand that has brought an offering unto you, that has been obedient to your word in bringing their tithes, Lord, let the blessing of obedience be upon us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may please be seated. Um, I'll give us time to, to renew our, our strength for the second round. Um, Jube News, are we ready? for the rest of this week. Children's Church services continue on site for children ages 4 to 11 at 10 a.m. And great news, Children's Church Summer Outing is back. The children will be going to Apple Jack's Farm on Saturday, the 30th of July. Children ages 5 and below should be accompanied by an adult. Cost per child is £20 and it covers entrance fees, rides and feeding. Pay payments are to be made to Children's Church teachers who will be allocated located at the member service desk after the service. Spaces will be allocated on first come first served basis and last day for payment is today, July the 17th. Our Sunday hybrid service continues on site and online and takes place on Sunday the 24th of July at 10 a.m. Workers' prayer session starts at 9 a.m. and the School of the Bible starts at 9.20 a.m. Please let's invite someone new. Our Holy Communion service takes place on Wednesday the 20th of July at 7pm. Please let's prepare to come and invite someone new as well. Jubilee Care and Prayer Squad meetings takes place on Thursday and Friday the 21st and 22nd of July. Leaders will send details of the meeting to their members. The Youth Church will be having their service on site in the small overflow at 10 a.m. on Sunday the 17th of July, which is today. All 11 to 18 year olds are encouraged to attend. A new session of baptismal class commenced on Saturday the 16th of July. Those still interested in joining the class should kindly indicate at the member service desk and leave your name and contact details. The next class of workers in training will commence in August. Workers and intending workers who have not gone through the training are encouraged to register at the member service desk. New Members Day comes up on Monday the 29th of August. All those who have joined the church in the last 18 months should please take note and make plans to attend. Updates and church meetings will be sent out by text with reminders to members on dates and times. For our meetings and events, if you do not receive text messages, kindly fill out one of the consent forms at the member service desk. Our prayer team prays every Tuesday night from 10pm via Zoom. To so join the prayer meeting, please use the details below. If you have any challenges or know any member of the church who needs any formal support, prayers or counselling, kindly ring or email the church at 0161 or you can email us at admin at jubileechurchmanchester.org. 
Our food bank is open on Wednesdays and Fridays between 12 and 3 p.m. Please feel free to make use of this facility or refer those who might require it. And let's continue to invite others to our online and on-site services through the various social media platforms, telephone calls and text messages. Leaflets are available at the member service desk. Are you a member of Jubilee Care and Prayer Squad? These are squads specially created to cater to the needs of JCM members within smaller groups and every adult is encouraged to join one. If you are not a member of any squad or would like to have more information about this, please see them at the member service desk. Have a great day and we will see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you, Jube News. Just to remind parents of young children, if you want your child to go to Applejack, Today is the last day that you can make payments. Please see them at the member's service. There will be a teacher there to receive the payment. Uh, we can't um, end this service without recognizing a special group of people. And these are people who are worshiping with us for the very first time. On this glorious Sunday, if this represents you, please can you raise up your hand so we can recognize you and give you a jubilee welcome. Please, thank you, sir. Please rise up. Please, wherever you are, if you are beside them, encourage them. Encourage them to stand up. As you rise, you are rising to new glory. You are rising to new blessings. You are rising to new heights in the name of Jesus. You are welcome. And I don't need to tell you that God is with us here. We are glad to have you. You are answers to our prayers. You know, God answers our prayers here. You are not here by chance. God has ordained your step. And the Lord who has ordained your step in this our month of new and restored opportunities he said to give you new and restore your opportunities in the mighty name of jesus we have a special way that we welcome our first timers in this church the whole church will be asking you a question just keep your answer you know because there's a team waiting to hear the answer from you church are we ready want to go where have you been? We've been waiting for you. We've been praying, and we know that you will surely come. And we are glad that you are finally here. So we want to show you more of our hospitality. So if you take your bag, your Bible, and everything that you've come to church with, and you follow our mother with a welcome banner, and she will give you a bit more of our hospitality. Church, let's encourage them. Let's clap for them. They are God sent. We give God all the glory. I promise you that there will be a second round of dancing. And we have to. Do you know why? Because yesterday was our dear Pastor B.C. Kamalafe's birthday. And you will agree with me that there is no distance in the spirit. Uh, we need to rejoice with her and we need to appreciate God for her life and also appreciate her. Is that okay? Okay. So can we rise? We are going to pray for her first and then we are going to rejoice in the presence of God for her life. Let's just rise up. Let's rise up. I'll call uh, Mommy Ajayi to please come. I want us to begin to thank God for our dear Pastor B.C. Komolafe's life. She's the wife of our senior pastor. She's the helpmate that the Lord has given unto him. Let's appreciate God for her life. Let's thank God for keeping her. Let's thank God for sending her a pastor's wife. Let's thank God for building her up, for how God has taken her, Lord, from glory to glory. Let's appreciate God on her behalf for another year, uh, another year of ministry, another year of
fullness of joy, another year of greater heights. Let's thank God for everything that the Lord has done in our life thus far. And let's thank God in advance for what God, the greater things that God is going to do in our life. Let's appreciate God for her joy, her peace, her anointing, her grace. Lord, we thank you for your grace upon your daughter's life, for your anointing. Lord, for the gift that you have made her, Lord, to this house, we thank you. We give you praise. We exalt your holy name. Lord, we join her to say thank you. Thank you for the purpose for which you brought her to the world. Thank you, Father, Lord, for how far you have brought her. Thank you, Jehovah, God, for giving her as a gift to us in this church. Oh, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for giving her as a gift to the body of Christ in this city and in this nation and all over the world. Thank you, Father, Lord, for greater heights. Thank you, Father, Lord, for comforting her on every side. Thank you for increasing her greatness. Thank you for new grace, new anointing, Lord, new insight, new direction, new strength. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you, Father, Lord, for the gift of the Spirit. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. We exalt your holy name. I want us to commit her into God's hand. A new year has started. A new year of new level, new heights, new anointing, new revelation, new insight into the word of God, new responsibility, new commitment, new zeal for the things of God, new strength, new wisdom. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. We commit her into your hand, O oh Lord, as it's a new year. You have promised to do a new thing in our life. Lord, we have started to do a new thing. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, Lord Jehovah, she will be the first partaker of that new thing. Lord, in the name of Jesus, as she marks her birthday, as she starts a new year. O oh Lord, we over God, we pray that, Lord, you will grant her new glory, new grace, new anointing, new strength, new, new, new hope. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Jehovah God, that you meet her at the point of her needs, much more than her expectation, much more than her husband's expectation concerning her, much more than our own expectations concerning her. Lord, you will do for her. Lord, you will surprise her. Lord, you will surround her with your fire. Lord, you will build her up. You will grant her, oh Lord, Jehovah God, what only you can give a man. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We bless your name. I want us to begin to prophesy into her life what we want God to do. What we want God to do for us, let's begin to prophesy that into her life, even as I hand over to our mommy. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. I want, I want us to be louder. We are standing in the gap for Pastor Bissikomalafe, the wife of the shepherd, our father. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Let's pray. Maso prama linda re mo so praba baba. We re mo so prama halinda re mo so talinda kasanda ha. Holy Spirit will help us to pray this morning because He knows. Le mo so prama le mo toye ke se prama le ndaraba sa. Soak her in the blood of Jesus. Cover her with the blood of Jesus. Our ways we cover with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It shall be well with our going in and in our coming out. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Our amen can be better. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We can't thank you enough for Pastor Bisi Komolafe. We thank you. From the beginning, from the day she was born, you knew that this day would come. And we are grateful. As a church, we stand to say thank you. We are grateful. What would have become of our pastor? Lord, you brought her in at the right time. Lord, we can't thank you enough for this that you did. We are grateful. We thank you. This morning, we prophesy into our life. And we decree and we declare it shall be well with you. Amen. Pastor Bisi Komolafe shall be well with you. Amen. You will live to fulfill purpose. The enemy will not triumph over you. It shall be well. When you call one, a thousand will respond. In the name of Jesus, 
we clear your path of every obstacle, of every hindrances, and we decree and declare that the angels of the Lord go with you everywhere. The Lord will give, his, give charge over you. The Lord will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In your sleeping, in your waking, you are blessed. In your talking, in your eating, you are blessed. Your morning is blessed. Your afternoon is blessed. Your evening is blessed. You will live to reap the fruit, to eat the fruit of your labor over this church, over your family, in the name of Jesus. Your place will not be empty. In the name of Jesus, you will not labor for another man to, to inherit. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will smile on you. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. And many, many more glorious years ahead for you, we decree and declare, blessed in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We are grateful. We exalt your holy name. In those areas where we have not touched, Father, you know them. We ask that in the heart of hearts, our desires, Father, please grant in the name of Jesus. Let it be well with her. We thank you, Lord. And we pray for our pastor, Father, let our place in his life forever be fulfilling. And let him enjoy her in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Choir. Happy birthday. Birthday to you. Our pastor BC, we want to let you know how we feel. Happy birthday, Pastor BC, we want to say that we love you. Happy birthday, Pastor BC. We want to let you know how we feel. Happy birthday, Pastor BC. We want to say that we love you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Are there Pastor BC Komola Fair? JCM is saying happy birthday to you. I know you are watching us. All your children are saying happy birthday to you. We wish you many, 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 many happy returns. And we wish you long life and prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. In the kingdom of God, you will not be found wanting. In the mighty name of Jesus. And you will reap and enjoy the fruit of your labor in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we rise? I just want us to give glory to God once again, to praise God on our behalf. Let's just appreciate God once again. That's our second round of praise unto our maker for her life. Let's just appreciate God. Hallelujah. Amen. You are, you are Yahweh. 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 Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. You are Yahweh.
those who may not understand why we did what we did, the Bible says we should rejoice with those who are rejoicing. That's one. And the word of God came to us today. It says we should create an atmosphere. The Bible says with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. So even as we go now, we go in this atmosphere and we will draw joy, blessings, victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we just begin to thank God, to appreciate God for today, for bringing us into his presence. Let's thank him for filling us with joy, for his word that has come to us. Let's thank the Lord for the new opportunities that is bringing our way, for opening our eyes to see those opportunities. Let's appreciate God for restored opportunities, those opportunities that we lost, that he will be restoring to us. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father, Lord, Jehovah God, because as we go now, we go in your power, we go in your might, we go with joy, with gladness in our hearts. Lord, we thank you, because indeed, we will draw out of the wells of salvation our blessings, our breakthrough, our victory, our new level, our promotion, everything that we have been trusting you for. Father, Lord, we draw it this week. In the name of Jesus, the heavens are open over us. In the name of Jesus, favor will attend to us. In the name of Jesus, the mercy of God has gone ahead of us to silence every voice of opposition, every voice of judgment. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is upon us. We are marked for victory. We are marked as the apple of God's eye. No demon will touch us in the name of Jesus. We receive grace to walk in his will. We receive grace to align our will with his will in the name of Jesus. And we receive grace to resist the devil in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Shall we share the grace in fellowship? And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me, it shall follow you all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord.
have a God who is powerful. Hallelujah. Hey. Of a God who is powerful, Hallelujah. Hey. 